So I know this is going to be kind of a weird comparison to make, but I think the reason why I'm uh, drawn so much uh, Jazz and Free Software is that they're both very similar uh, sort of in spirit, you know? And, uh, you know, the point being is that they both, you know, the main thing that links them together is that they both place a huge sense of importance and, uh, I guess, encourages user slash player individuality and freedom, right? And uh, I know jazz isn't the only music genre to have things like improvisation or anything like that, but it is probably the largest music genre that places uh, the largest importance on it, or utilizes it to its largest potential, right? And, um, you know, if you've ever seen, like, covers, like jazz covers between two different musicians on the same song, even if they play the same instrument, uh, a lot of the times the covers will be completely different just from the player's different styles they have. And, you know, that's largely because of the freedom that jazz as a music genre provides you. I mean, obviously there's standards with chord progressions and certain scales that are associated with the genre, but you could really do uh, a lot that's, you know, just on your own accord. And uh, I think it was Miles Davis or some other uh, musician at the time, but, you know, they said that, you know, there's no such thing as a wrong note in jazz, right? If you, if you make a mistake, then if you make it again, uh, then it's no longer a mistake, you know, it's just a part of your, I guess, performance. And uh, playing jazz gets, you know, a while to get used to, especially if you come from a different, uh, I guess, training or different genre. But once you get used to it, or at least, you know, for me personally, once I got used to it, it is, you know, really, really, like, natural and, I guess, liberating in a sense that other genres can't really provide you. And, uh, you know, players can take pretty much any cool uh, chord progression or playing technique or lick or anything like that and infuse it in their own playing style and they can have their own, I guess, uh, you know, take on a certain song or, you know, take on how to go about, uh, I guess, expressing the same musical idea in their own unique way. And it's, you know, made from all these other different people, right? And uh, obviously the same thing is true when it comes to free software. You can take some script that some guy wrote like five years ago and some other library that some other person made and you could, you know, use it to fix somebody else's program that needs to fit your own specific needs. And then you could redistribute that program for everybody else to use, right? And it's a very... Um, it's a very liberating feeling as a, as a programmer to really own and be able to manipulate your tools to that level that you just aren't able to do when making or using proprietary software, right? And, um, you know, obviously when it comes to both of these things, not everything is about the individual, but it definitely places them, you know, definitely places the user and the player uh, first before anybody else, right? And it places their interest and their needs as the, um, you know, top priority, and, uh, you know, it's just a really great thing to, I guess, you know, be involved in something that you really feel like you have control over, and that you could dictate how it goes, and how you do it, and how it's done, right, and, uh, you know, it's just sort of like a quick thought that I had just now that I wanted to record. Maybe it probably sounded kind of stupid to, to make that comparison, but you know, they're both things that I like a lot, and and uh, I guess that's the one main thing that links them together, is that they have uh, similar priorities in that regard.